Hello, and welcome to Stocks Down Under. My name is Stuart Roberts, and I'm one of the co-founders of our service. And joining me on the morning of Friday, the 5th of April, 2024, from Perth, is Mr. John DeVries, who's the CEO of BlackRock Mining, ASX BKT. John, good morning. Good morning, Stuart. How's things in Sydney? It's uh, it's very wet here and uh, dry on your part of the country. Um, yeah, certainly. <laughs> uh, what it's about to rain in uh, in Western Australia is shareholder value for BlackRock Mining, if, if you've played your cards right. Um, now, uh, let's let's um, um, set the scene here. Um, BlackRock spent the last seven or so years working on the Mahenge uh, 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 graphite project in Tanzania. Um, you're getting you've done a, a, a bankable feasibility study. You're about to get to um, final investment decision on Mahenge in the not too distant future. Um, there's a bit of paperwork to do between now and then. Um, so, uh, amongst other things, let's talk about funding. Uh, obviously, you're going to have to get bank loads to to um, to get this great project going. Talk to us about how uh, you've progressed there. Yeah, probably two elements in the in the banking approach that we've done, and and they head under the one category called validation. So we've done two key components of validation. Component number one is working with POSCO of Korea uh, as an offtake partner. Now POSCO is the biggest anode producer outside of China. Uh, and has in place facilities to take concentrate and turn it into anode. So we don't need to build out a whole supply chain. We can just be a team member of a supply chain. So validation point number one is POSCO stepping in and saying our product is good enough to, to buy from them and entering into a long-term contract, which they've done for Module 1. Um, POSCO... Uh, is also standing in the market now. They've done a $10 million prepay for Module 2, which is uh, for, for Module 1, and we're just closing off now a $40 million cornerstone investment, uh, which will give them rights for, for Module 2, but is funding for Module 1. So so POSCO is stepping in here, something like $57.5 million total support for the project. So we think yeah, that's a massive endorsement for, for the engineering, and it's a massive endorsement for the product quality. What we're able to do then is take that endorsement uh, to a banking syndicate, which is primarily based out of South Africa, uh, and say, look, we've got product endorsement from, from POSCO. Um, how does this sit for where you guys go in terms of banking? And uh, you know, they, they've looked at us and they go, look, we think you've solved the technical issues. We think you've solved the commercial issues. Um, we're happy to step in there and support that. And that's where Development Bank of Southern Africa and the Industrial Development Corporation of South Africa have stepped in for $113 million of term loans. And recently we've had CRDV out of Tanzania, and we're talking to one or two other entities out of Tanzania, to come in and provide a working capital facility and a cost overrun facility. So I think if you're sitting here from uh, an equity perspective and say, look, I've got plenty of choices in the graphite space, I turn around and go, well, what we're different is we're the only entity that has a, a large existing ex-China anode producer um, happy to be a shareholder with us and happy to support us all the way through. And also we've got uh, through the banking credibility test. So, you know, believe us, but most certainly understand that, uh, that we've been through a pretty rigorous process with both POSCO and the banks to get to where we are. And that should give investors an awful lot of confidence about about the project overall. Right. It's one reason why uh, I'm a shareholder and, uh, and we're, we're shareholders in this in this firm. So um, uh, oh. this this is a very very self interested interview we're doing this morning. Um, <laughs> so uh, the uh, the basically uh, we can assume that the, the 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 debt component is more or less available. You're coming up to a final investment decision, which uh, will happen mm. uh, in in, uh, in a matter of um, months rather than years. Uh, uh, what what happens when we reach final investment decision? Yeah, let's talk about the milestones we we need to hit on the way through to final investment decision. Firstly, we do need POSCO to go binding on that $40 million. Uh, I've worked in BHP, so I've got a really good idea how large organisations work, and there's a fair <laughs> bit of machinery working away there. So uh, it, it, it's humming away, and, and I'm very confident we, we will get there in a not-too-distant future, but it is a lot of machinery. Right. The second thing we need to do is complete the, the loan documentation. So one of the challenges where you've got multiple entities sitting in a loan syndicate is they all have to agree to the same terms and conditions. And that sets things like, you know, uh, interest rates and, uh, you know, what do we need there for in terms of debt reserve accounts and things like that. So that's going to produce a, 
um, you know, a unified view of how much that debt looks like. And then the final leg on this is we've been going down the line of what we call the partner process, uh, and that is looking to see if we can sell off a little bit of our holding company or dilute at the holding company level in the UK. Uh, and that has a couple of effects on that. It does bring in uh, premium uh, relative to equity at Topco, but uh, bringing that that equity in at the holding company really reduces the amount of dilution we have at Topco. And we've got a lot of interest there. Um, you know, it's taken a while to generate that interest and, and interest is really coming out of two entities. It's what I'd call the, the experienced mid-tier companies. These guys are you know, well-run, medium-sized companies who understand Africa. Uh, and then we've also got a few, uh, few of the larger funds who are trying to work out how they play the, uh, the energy transition space and, and, and understand the difference in our value proposition compared to peers. Uh, and, and are looking at how they come in, whether they come in at Topco or whether they come in at that holding co. So we need to get through those three uh, hurdles before we get to FID. Um, and obviously we're working pretty hard to, to get that done. And we hope to hit FID you know, mid-year this year. Uh, and that'll give us a, a six-month construction window ahead of the, the wet season. So there's a lot of work to get done once we hit FID. Right. And uh, and obviously, uh, uh, by about 2026, we hope to be actually um, uh, shipping first product from uh, Module 1 at, at Mahenge. So roughly a 20-month turnaround time from uh, all, all things being equal once you mm. get to that final investment decision. Yeah, look, it's 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 20 months, um, assuming can we get our uh, front-end loading done. Uh, if, if we struggle with the front-end loading, um, it'll probably add you know, a few weeks to that schedule. But uh, yeah, mid-26 is when we expect to be shipping first concentrate. And that lines up well with POSCO, uh, who are looking at building an intermediate plant in, in Korea. Um, so you'll see a recent announcement from POSCO where they uh, are not only taking product from us, but taking product from CIRA uh, for a very, very large intermediate plant that they want to construct in Korea. So there's a whole bunch of things that need to fall into place to, to bring that about. Right now, we we uh, we speak of the end product, which in your case is 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 concentrates. Not long ago, China decided to um, uh, uh, mm. ban the export of concentrates out of that country, and uh, China is a, is is a pretty big player in, uh, in in graphite. It's fair to say. What's the implications for you down the line uh, for what you do? Yeah, look, it, it's a fascinating where this is going to play out. Um, so so China hasn't banned it; they've just regulated it, which means right. they have the option to make it really challenging. Right. Um, one thing they're doing now is, is rather than saying, you know, POSCO, you can buy everything you need until you buy BlackRock's product, they're saying it's cargo by cargo. So it, it does bring in the element of geopolitical tension because anything can and will happen over the next two years in terms of geopolitics between America, uh, Team America and Team China. Um, so, you know, we'll see where that goes. What it means for us critically is... Two elements. Um, a key part of our value proposition is we have only stayed at the concentrate level. So we haven't had to bolt uh, a research and development experiment to, to our business model. So it's, it, it's simple. We know we can produce concentrate and we know POSCO has the IP to be able to, to process that concentrate. So we don't have to do A, find a process that works and B, build it, which is a challenge for a junior company. I think the other one comes back to the speed at which we can execute. Um, we've got one module. Once module one is up and going, the other three are just basically photocopies of the first one. So we can rapidly respond to supply chain demands, put extra product out there very, very quickly. Obviously, that's a function of the market price that we get uh, and the capital availability. Right. Now, um, you keep track of regularly of the a basket of product that reflects the output, uh, the future output of, of Mahenga. Right. And uh, we've, we've seen uh, prices turning just lately uh, uh, out of China as far as you can um, uh, track them. Uh, and interestingly, you're down uh, near the bottom end of the cost curve uh, for, yeah. for what you do. Um, uh, how did you manage to get uh, in such a favourable position where you could produce concentrate so cheaply? Well, a couple of things. Um... So Tanzania has got what we call a, a blended geology and geography. So the geology gives us a deposit that's you know, high quality graphite, but particularly it's got a bias towards large flake. Um, and it's large flake that lifts the average price of that basket. 
Um, somewhat ironically, when we started the, the banking process, we worked with a, a number of price forecasters and we ended up using Wood Mackenzie as the deck for the banks because at that time, Wood Mackenzie produced what we'd call a fairly miserable looking price forecast. Turned out they were spot on. Right. Um, and the good news about the Wood Mackenzie price forecast is it does get better from here on going forward. Right. We're, we're, we're frankly, we're, at the, we're coming out of the bottom of the cycle for, for yeah. graphite. And, and, and we're at the bottom of the cycle. Um, China has weaponized uh, graphite by causing a build out of synthetic capacity that's pushed down price. Uh, that quite hasn't slowed down what's going on in the West. So now they're just trying to regulate, making it hard to get intermediates. So they're the two context points about where we are in terms of the price, because we are using observable Chinese pricing. China does control three quarters of the natural market. Um, what it can do and what it would appear to have done uh, initially is caused a bank up inside China, a product that should be exported that isn't getting exported. So we're starting to see China go a little long on some of the fines. Uh, and getting tight on some of the large flakes. So again, that works to to our mix of, of product. So I think the the final point out of this is, yeah, we are at the bottom of the cycle. And at the bottom of the cycle, we're bringing in $2 of revenue for every dollar of cost. Uh, so it's bankable at the bottom of the cycle. And the reason it's bankable at that, that cost point is fundamentally we are connecting into grid power in Tanzania. That gives us competitively priced power. It's about eight cents a unit. If I was running a diesel standalone set, I'd be looking at low 40s cents a unit. Right. Uh, so yeah, there's a hell of a value proposition there in terms of keeping our costs where we need to be. And uh, you know, a basic belief of this organisation is that we, we recognise the dominance of China in that supply chain, but standing out there and, and asking for forgiveness and government support is setting yourself up for failure. Somebody is going to kick that crutch out at some point in time. So if you're going to get built, you have to build a business that is fundamentally competitive on the current terms. And right. if you can't make it competitive, you shouldn't be building. Right. Now, we've talked about the, um, uh, you've, you've called it with POSCO a supply chain alliance. Um, hmm. now, it, 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 in the uh, non-Chinese part of the world, POSCO is the 800-pound uh, gorilla. But are we going to see a situation where other POSCOs arise in, in, in the future that you can also do business with that are, that are seeking to build that, that non-Chinese uh, infrastructure? We're seeing a lot of people joggle for position in this space. Um, I, I guess what I've observed is if you would go back four or five years ago, um, everybody was turning around and saying, you know, I've got a unique pathway to anode um, and it involves a different ex science experiment, works well in the lab. Five years later, they still work well in the lab, but we're having all sorts of difficulty in terms of scaling up the alternative flow sheets around making SVG. Right. So you're back to sticking with the uh, the one we do know, which is hydrofluoric acid. Now, hydrofluoric acid um, is a particularly difficult chemical to, to, to manage, um, and it's expensive to, to treat uh, so you can discharge it uh, safely. So what you're trying to look for is what I call co-location benefits. Um, and, and there are two elements with this one. Firstly, you need access to low-cost HF. So you're looking for industries that blast off a bit of HF as a waste stream, such as silicon chip manufacturing. Uh, right. So they use HF for etching. They've got to dispose of it. Hey, it's a good spot to put an SPG plant nearby. Right. The other one, you have a waste stream coming off the mechanical shaping, uh, and that waste stream can be used for recarburizing uh, liquid steel. So if you think about where POSCO is, well, they actually have a steel mill too, uh, yeah. and those steel mills are close to silicon chip plants. Right. So they're able to replicate the co-location benefits that the Chinese can. So when you start looking out, well, who else is going to do this? It's a pretty short list of locations. It, that can it, actually Japan and build. Taiwan is probably about it, right? Uh, West Germany and okay. uh, elements of North America. But, you know, it, it, it gets to be a pretty short list in a hurry. Right. Right, so uh, so so basically, you've you've picked the best friend in the business uh, for, to 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 work with going forward. Absolutely, and I think the thing I'd say, um, the working relationship we have with Posca, you know, we we talk formally once a week, but we would be swapping emails, WhatsApps, you know, twenty thirty times a week with them. Uh, so we're really working in one step. It's really, you know, we've sat in on a couple of senior meetings where we've had to have POSCO and government officials, et cetera, in there. 
And um, it's pretty clear that it's POSCO, Black Rocks, increasingly a single team. Right. Um, so as I've talked this story with other people, um, the, the issue of sovereign risk still comes up. And that relates mm. to, to a period where um, John Magafuli, the, the uh, late president of Tanzania, was yeah. uh, putting in place the, the, the framework for the Tanzanian state to take 60% of new mining uh, uh, projects. You've done your framework agreement, so that, that's all set. I'm telling people that uh, that uh, current president, uh, Samir Suhu uh, Hassan, has, has brought Tanzania out of the cold, and it's quite a congenial investment environment that you have in Tanzania. What's your take on the ground at the moment? Look, it's it's a hell of a lot better than than the days of when we were dealing with with the Magafuli administration. I think what we're really working with Tanzania is that there hasn't been a large mine built in Tanzania for well over a decade now. So there's a whole generation of bureaucracy that we need to train um, and engage with, and say so these are the things that you need to go through for financing a new mine uh, and for developing a new mine. So there's a you know Baraka there and then Anglo Gold are there and they established large operations, but they're steady state operations. So so they're in a different category. In terms of developing a mine, you know, we're spending a fair bit of time training people. Moving forward very, very quickly, um, uh, the the new administration under Her Excellency has done, you know, really stepped forward. It's engaging, it actively is reaching out to to engage and learn. So um, yeah, you know, I'm I'm super positive about where this goes. I think the other comment I'd make, you know, and it, it, it's it's not trivial, is while we we turn around and go, geez, it's, you know, it can be hard in Tanzania. If I look at other jurisdictions, um, you know, California, Montana, British Columbia, Victoria, right. I, you want a hard place to open a mine? There are a lot harder places to open a mine up. So we can right. still do things in Tanzania. Um, it is different from what we're used to here in Australia. Uh, and, you know, you just need to to understand which direction the wind's blowing and, and work with them as opposed to uh, trying to, to herd them around to our way of doing things. Right. Well, John DeVries, well done to you and your team on uh, everything you've, you've managed to uh, get done uh, to get to this point. And uh, good luck with reaching final investment decision in the next few months. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'll tell you, it's a uh, the smell of wet concrete in the morning is going to be joy to my heart. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining Stocks Down Under. 